Hello my soccer universe. You're looking at a very happy man and dare I say it healthy. Almost there. I think I'm feeling quite good overall and with results like today my two favorite teams were playing and both got wins so I couldn't be happy about that. Um, first of all I didn't um, do any videos on the two league games yesterday uh, Bayern winning at Augsburg 3-2 being down twice coming back through Kings and Coman twice and then um, I think Alaba makes the winner and Juventus getting a very easy 3-0 victory uh, at home to Frosinone also nothing to write home about one of the what is to write home about and I know it's not necessarily in my big focus but Austrian Cup yeah we're starting again Yesterday, uh, Austria Vienna lost to uh, the second team from Graz, who actually they were champions in 2004 and the whole thing collapsed and they had to start from the bottom again. Now they're on the third level, uh, potentially breaking through to the second one. But this is an amateur team. There's more than half the team is still working and they beat Austria Vienna at home 2-1. Uh, we're down one nil at halftime. Austria is getting two guys sent off, and yeah, they win it two one. Uh, that's a pretty big sensation, uh, gotta say. And today, Lask, uh, second in the league, playing as a third place team, St. Burton, and absolutely demolished them. Uh, had a big chance after five minutes. Then I thought, yeah, mm -hmm, it was kind of tight. And they make the one nil uh, through Shoah Victor. I know I'm not. I don't want to bore, uh, bore you too much with the names or uh, whatever, but I just have to say it from a very acute angle. Uh, the two nil was um, very horrible defending that Goigenga puts in three nil. Our new striker Jean Klaus, uh, who was the Finnish top goal scorer last season. Um, belongs to Hoffenheim. I'm very impressed by him. Uh, strong striker, also technically gifted. Uh, knows where the goal is. We're 3 0. Uh, and that was just after a little bit, half an hour, and then it was even 4 0 before I have to show a victory again, uh, just moving through the defense. And it just didn't stop there. I was an offside goal, 5 0, and then uh, 2. They took off the our front. He took off our front three, brought three other strikers on, which is mind-boggling to me. I mean, I, this is the best last team I've ever seen. And they managed to not only uh, get the sixth goal through Tete, but also combined for another uh, hit to the upright. I'm thoroughly impressed. Six nil. I mean, as uh, a reason why I'm wearing this shirt. Uh, this is really the best Lask team that I've ever seen. It doesn't have the star power, but uh, it uh, squad is so wisely built. Um, they might not threaten for the championship, unfortunately, but they can go far. So let's get Austria aside. I, don't, I know. Uh, so we're in the semifinals and two more games. Uh, Rapid and Salzburg probably will make those and they will be in the semifinals and then, and then, and then we'll see. Uh, Watched actually first uh, uh, a little bit some other stuff as well, but the first game that I sort of followed was Rayo Vallecano against Atletico Madrid, and Atletico Madrid is not playing well at all, and they got such a lucky win there. Uh, not all it could have there been a penalty just a few minutes before they make the one nil. There were uh, chances for Rayo Vallecano, who clearly had more of the game. And then should have, could have, should have be a penalty. VAR didn't interfere. And then Griezmann makes a shot that is deflected into the net, makes it one nil. One of the scrappiest victories you've you've ever seen. But you know, typically Atletico Madrid victory. Uh, then what game did I watch next? Yeah, more follow than. Uh, actually watched, I actually was working on some personal stuff, but you know, it's on, it was Cagliari Parma, where um, Parma took a lead through a really nice header 
uh, the ball went away from goal and uh, kind of like that hit the ball and then via the bar in and Parma had a one nil lead at halftime. However, Cagliari turned it around. Um, first one was a nice, uh, was it a header that then was poked in under the goalkeeper and the second one also a header uh, after a freaky corner kick. Really towering header right in the internet and I was happy to see Cagliari win. They got a player sent off, but you know. I said last week, Cagliari played well, well, well against Milan and I really think they, they deserve staying in. And speaking of Milan, that was the other match and I'm gonna put a lot of focus on that one because this was also a wonderful match. It's actually the big matchup this week and in Serie A. And it's fourth against fifth. And I have, at the beginning, I actually thought, yeah, if Milan can get away with a draw there, it will not be great because that will mean they will lose fourth uh, spot and probably even drop behind the two Rome uh, teams who will overtake them uh, with a win. However, I thought, it, well, it is Atalanta. It's a really, really tough uh, place to win. Uh, I mean, a loss there is catastrophic because then Atalanta will overtake you too and suddenly you find yourself after this round in seventh spot. And the game actually started with Atalanta being the pesky team that they are. I mean, uh, lots of credit to At Atalanta. When I say pesky, I mean this as a compliment. They really are a hard team to play, play a, a really high press and uh, nasty. But after 10 minutes or so, I thought Milan righted the ship and even had a huge chance by Cassie and uh, had control of the game around 10 minutes or so. You know, there was the initial storm of Atalanta, then it switched over to Milan, and then it slowly flowed back into Atalanta's favor. Although Atalanta never really had the big chances, um, they controlled the game and Milan could not get anything cohesive together. And so it was only a matter of time. Ilicic, constant, constant nuisance. Uh, dribbles around, gets the ball in, and suddenly, I mean, although Milan had all defenders there, there are three or four Atalanta f uh, players at the edge of the box free. And uh, Freuler uh, takes the shot in the 33rd, that is saved by Donnarumma, but it goes to the post and in. Uh, not much he can do about it. And it's 1-0, and it really looks like Atalanta is taking this into the break. <laughs> Almost looks like. Rodriguez, tentative ball in the box, and you could see Piontek was kind of, here I am, moves in, takes it volley, and puts it in the internet. This guy is unbelievable. Fourth game for Milan, fourth goal. This guy knows where the goal is. I mean, he touches the ball, and uh, as soon as he uh, lets go of the goal, this, the ball is in the goal. Uh, I'm trying to find a, what who rem he reminds me of, and uh, the only comparison I could have is somewhere a mix between Inzaghi and Van Basten. I was thinking, is Shevchenko in there? And, and I'm thinking only Milan strikers, like that, but I have not seen in the modern game a striker like that who touches the ball, he knows where, where, where it goes and puts it in, and you don't see him other times. Yes, he's taking part in, 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 the, in the game, but he's not great uh, of technical ability necessarily. But he's a very, very present striker and uh, unbelievable hunger and zest for goals. An absolute slam dunk. Uh, same as Paqueta. Uh, those two, this is a great acquisitions by Milan. So it's 1-1 at halftime and you can imagine how second half. I mean, Atalanta is furious trying to get the lead again and it looks a lot like the end of the first half Atalanta having the possession Milan uh, barely hanging on a little bit but then they launch a counter-attack um, where a shot is blocked suddenly Jalanoglu shows up and first goal of the season thunders it in the corner in the 55th I was giddy I mean Jalanoglu, I have been also critical of him. He really, you could see that he put a lot of effort in last week already. And this week he finally gets his, his goal. And he actually is now, I'm getting a little bit more tired of Suso. Although I really like Suso. But um, he seems to have always the same trick or whatever. He's like a poor man's Aryan Robin. 
Rom puts the ball in the, in the net, uh, Suso puts it, he, he would be a great field goal kicker for American football at, at, at one. But I, I honestly, I really like Suso. Uh, it's nothing really against him, but um, I wish his accuracy was uh, better. He, he is a teeny bit off. But with Jalan Oglu back, mm, mm, I'm really, really, really starting to like this Milan team. I mean, you have Paqueta, you have Jalan Oglu, this, oh, da, 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 da. this team starts to work, and I really like the defensive midfield. I like what Bakayoko is doing. I was cursing at this guy starting when he did said that there was all the um, injuries starting there this guy is suddenly playing great in december i thought the team needs to be nuked and uh i, I was afraid that gatu is gonna say off. not that i think that he's a must keep for milan but i don't like a coaching changes during the season but i really thought that gatu is off and during the winter break, two great acquisitions, and suddenly the team is working. You also get some injuries back. And to me, the most uh, impressive thing is that you don't need your arguably best player from last season, Jinjak Bonaventura, who is still out with an injury. Same for uh, the new wonder kid Caldara in defense, also still out for of in, in injury. But you got him, and I hope he will come back soon. The defense looks really, really good, and Donnarumma suddenly is really playing what you would expect from an Italian national team goalkeeper and from one of the prodigious talents. So 2-1. Milan. Atalanta doesn't let go. But Milan kind of, you know, hit them a little bit. And then there's a corner kick, and Piatek heads it in. With second, only second goal. Uh, of, from Milan after uh, that, that was had in I think only the second after a corner kick or something like that. I mean, absolutely impossible. And again, Piatek out of nowhere. He comes there, he knows exactly where the ball is going to go, he knows exactly he wants to pull it in the net. He jumps up and has it in. Gone. And I cannot do it as well as he does. It's, I like his, his celebration. Absolutely amazing player. Five goals in four games for Milan. And he only plays until the 60th minute most of the time. I mean, that the ratio is unbelievable. I mean, I and you find a video where I said, I'm not sure uh, what to say about Piontek. I mean, he has a great season, but it seems like uh, people are figuring him out or, or, or whatever. I think then he was still with Genoa when they were uh, trying to find a replacement for E. Goin. I mean, I actually liked Igo I was hoping that it worked out, but clearly it was not working out for him. Uh, and Milan is all the way better. They got the huge salary off. Yes, you had to pay a lot for Piontek, but he's a lot cheaper. So, um, bam! 3 1. Uh, then Cutrone came on. I feel a little bit sorry for Cutrone, but you know, it will. He will find the net as well. And then Milan has two really good strikers. And, and I like Cotrona's uh, team spirit. Uh, I mean, he is, he is a good guy. And I, I, I think he's also... I uh, hope he will remain in, in, in the future. 3-1 in the 61st. Uh, that really knocked Atalanta over. They tried. Especially Ilicic had a few uh, chances and got really pesky but you know uh, Zapata had to come off and that was actually relieved me Gomez had to come off I mean that guy was a pain in the butt uh, but that helped it was with Milan really defended well Donnarumma didn't have to make any great saves anymore and they played at home relatively safe he could have even made it four uh, if they played a little bit smarter Cotrone had chances Paqueta was running on to goal um, botched it. I think it's because it's been 4 1. I mean, a huge win. If you look now at the standings, after all that, Milan is now safely in fourth place. Roma can come close only by a point, Lazio only by a point, Atalanta is a seventh spot now. Uh, it's an absolute monster win. And you're one point behind Inter. Uh, who is Inter playing? Sampdoria at home, yeah. Probably that they will win that one. Uh, but that's huge win for Milan. Absolutely huge win. Super happy about it. And then I watched the last two minutes of Barcelona against Valladolid. 
I saw that person Messi had put them ahead with a penalty, and when I pulled over, Messi was taking another penal penalty that was uh, saved by Mazip. I hope I got the name right. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Mazip, who actually was the third string goalkeeper for Barcelona until two years ago. Uh, and he's not much taller than Messi. That dad, I was, but you know, he saved it in. And then Messi's body language didn't look good, but at least he tried something. But I, if, to me, Barcelona seemed un, uninterested or only interested in now putting the ball in the net in the most complicated way possible and maybe get Suarez a goal, although he is completely so out of any form. Uh, those last 10 minutes, I mean, uh, all the version of Barcelona would have made three goals out of in, in those, but they seemed... I don't like the way Barcelona looks at the moment. Maybe they need a challenge again, uh, but it really looked not good. Let's look quickly at other results. Uh, let's stay in Spain. Um, Real Sociedad beat Leganes 3-0, Celta Vigo uh, lost at home to Levante uh, 4-1, and Eibar and Getafe played a 2-2. I think that that was already yesterday, so... Uh, standings Barcelona is now, of course, uh, again, seven points out of Atleti, but Real Madrid has to play tomorrow. Uh, same goes for Sevilla, Getafe. Uh, moving up, let's see, yeah. Rayo still remains in trouble, uh, as does Rayo the lead in Celta. So, yeah, Le uh, Leganes uh, is now in 12th, Levante moves up into 11th, at least temporarily. So that's Spain. Um, let's go quickly. France, and let's look at just the results. Uh, Nîmes, Dijon, 2 0. Lyon, Gagan, 2 1. Marseille, Amiens, 2 0. Angers, Nice, 3 0. Uh, I can't. And Monaco wins against Nantes, 1 0. And uh, for me, that Monaco is climbing out of the relegation zone, although they are, they are still not quite in the clear. Uh, Dijon has a game in hand. Caen. As a game, but Kao could not catch them. Gangao cannot catch them either, but you know, uh, getting there and Marseille is climbing um, still with more games than the competition. I mean, they have one more than Saint Etienne, they are level on points with Lyon, who have 46, Marseille is 40, Lille 24 games, 49, and Paris, Paris Saint Germain with 22 is 59 points. I mean, we already know that the uh, uh, title is decided in France. Um, then FA Cup, uh, there were four games uh, yesterday and today. Uh, Watford wins at QPR 1 0. Uh, Brighton and Hove Albion 2 1 against Derby County. We're up 2 0 at halftime. Wimbledon loses at home to Millwall and then uh, Newport County against City 1 4. 0 0 at halftime, though. Uh, the big game to, is on Monday between Chelsea and Manchester United, which to me. Yes, it depends on, on, on the draw, but you know, United would be favored in there, and then there's City in there, and it looks like there could be, given the draw is correct, a Manchester final. And yeah, that would actually be interesting to watch. And finally, Bundesliga. I said already Bayern winning 3 2 at Augsburg. Uh, Schalke, Freiburg 0 0. Hoffenheim, Hannover 3 0. Stuttgart losing at home 1 3 to Leipzig, uh, Wolfsburg 3 0 to Mainz, and 1 1 between uh, Hertha and Werder Bremen. Uh, what does this mean for the table actually? Uh, yeah, Bayern is now two points behind Dortmund. Um, Leipzig is uh, fourth spot. Wolfsburg comes up, at least temporarily, overtakes Frank Frankfurt, fifth spot, 35 points. Um, Hoffenheim also is now 11, 11 points with Frankfurt. And Hertha is dropping out. Hertha and Werder. Uh, Hertha 32 points in 9th and Werder 31 points in 10th. And yeah, Augsburg still in, in trouble. 18 points. Stuttgart 15 points. Hannover 14 points. And Nürnberg still have to play tomorrow. Have 12 points. So that's the... It's... Two out of those four will be rele relegated and one goes into the relegation playoff. I think Schalke is the first team that I would call safe, although they are in 14 spots. Uh, also don't look that good. Well, 
again I'm super happy for my teams today Lask scoring 6-0 six, six goals and Milan getting a huge win at Atalanta I'm super happy let me know what you thought about most of these games or which games you watched uh, I'm also that happy as I am not sure about that um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these and I will talk to you soon bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too also please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe and with that i want to wish you a wonderful day